when we analyze the problem about putting two blocks along a frictionless surface and pushing one and asking what is the maximum force such that block two does not slip, we have three different systems. And now I want to focus a little bit on what would happen if we just naively chose our systems as both blocks together. So let's try to look at the types of issues that come up when we do that. So once again, let's draw free body diagrams. Now, we begin, we're pushing block one with a force. Gravitation is the sum of these two forces because our system here is block one and block two. What about normal forces? Well, the ground is acting on block one. And now here's the significant thing. What about all of those forces between blocks one and two? Well, the forces between blocks one and two are internal forces. And we saw that they were friction forces, F12 and F21. This was the friction force between the two blocks block on block two due to one, and the friction force on block one due to two. There were normal forces between these two blocks, but these are interaction pairs. And the sum of them are zero. And so we see that all, they're all internal forces for, form Newton's third law interaction pairs, and the vector sum of them are zero, and that's why I don't need those internal forces on my free body diagram. If I were to draw them, I would have different arrows. For instance, I would have that arrow F21, and I would have the arrow F12, and you can see that the sum of those cancel. I would have the arrow n21, and I would have the arrow n12, arrows in opposite directions. The interaction pairs sum to zero because they are internal forces. And again, this enables us now to just draw f equals m1 plus m2 times the acceleration of the system. And so we have our i hat and our j hat directions. Let's pick i hat and j hat. And now we didn't include the kinetic friction force of the ground in that system. So let's make sure that that's there. And what we have is f minus f kinetic equals m1 plus m2 times a. And in the vertical direction, we have n ground 1 minus m1 plus m2g equals 0. That gave us our same result before. Notice that f equals fk plus m1 plus m2g. We know this is mu k m1 plus m2g plus m1 plus m2g a. So we have the acceleration of the system depends on the force mu k m1 plus m2 g divided by m1 m2. But notice, because our static friction is an internal force in this system, it never shows up in Newton's second law. So we were never able to apply the condition that f static max was mu static n, what we call the normal force between the blocks. And so we are unable to figure out what is the maximum force. All we can say is, if I push f, that's the acceleration. But I cannot determine what maximum force will cause block 2 to slip with respect to block 1. So when you pick your system like this, it's very quick to calculate a. No problem about that but I am not able to answer any questions that require some type of information about the internal forces. So the art to choosing systems and free body diagrams 
is to think about the types of questions you're asking. If you have a question that involves something about a maximum condition on static friction, then you want to make sure that static friction is an external force to your system. If it's an internal force, like in this case, you will not be able to apply that condition.